Don't stop it there. Don't stop it there. How many of y'all can really attest that the blood really does work? Y'all y'all ain't got to say it for me. Y'all ain't got to do it for me. But who can really and truly attest that the blood of Jesus still works? Amen. I'm a witness on today that it has worked for me. It has worked and saved my life. And maybe it hasn't done anything for you. But I just thank God all these songs that they've sung on today. Every praise belongs to the God, the true and living God that we serve. Amen. I ain't coming to prompt and prime, y'all. I'm here to tell y'all that if you don't have your, as the old folks say, you ain't got your religion before you came through the door, I pray that God strikes you when you get in here and some get a hope to you. Because we're here in the midst of a good time and God is already in the midst of this service. Amen. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. And we're just thankful that God is in this house on today. Y'all don't know like I know how good God has been 
So that's why I stand here saying, God, thank you for this opportunity. I could have been dead sleeping in my grave, but God gave us another opportunity to come out, and I'm grateful for that. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to take up any of the time. Y'all, this ain't even my task. I came to introduce the MC, but it's just something about when you give a preacher a mic and you get to talking about Jesus. And I think about over my life about how he's kept me, how he's, how he's shaping me, how he's molding me, how he's creating me, how he's directing me. I can't help but to get excited about the God that we serve. I understand what Jeremiah was talking about when he said it's just like fire shut up on the inside. It's just something to do to me. And I'm just thankful for God being present in my life to my pastor, the best pastor on this side of heaven. <laughs> Apostle Victor McDowell to the other ministers and the pastors on the platform. God bless y'all. My task is so easy. This man has known me all of my life. And I'm, I'm here to tell this, and I promise you, I, I'll leave you alone. But we are overcome, overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. There was a time when my father wasn't present in my life. Thank God for change, though. <laughs> amen, amen. Thank God for change. Not only is my father present in my life, y'all, my father's in church on today, and I, I bless God for that. That's why I say you can't tell it like I can what the Lord has truly done for me. But in those years when I felt like I was all alone, that I didn't have a solid male role model in my life, this man definitely stepped up to the plate. He made me mad a lot of times, and I didn't want to hear what he had to say, but he definitely was just trying to be obedient to the will of God for the things that he saw that God was doing in my life that I didn't want to submit to. And I'm just thankful for the MC that is coming today, and I promise you, I, I charge you to pull on them. If you pull on them, God will speak through them. Now, if you didn't come expecting if you, anything today, if you came just to spectate, you just keep on spectating. But I'm here to tell you, if you pull on the man of God that is the MC on today, I promise you he has the fire of God on the inside of him. And if you pull on him, God going to show up. If you, don't, if you think I'm just talking, just try it. But I'm here to present a, a, a man that without a shadow of a doubt, I know that he is God-fearing, a father, and a father, a, a faithful husband, a pastor. I don't want to get the church name wrong because I, I real jack it up real quick. But I present the psalm and introduce to others none other than the great doctor, Pastor Eric Wilson.
us coming together and enjoying. O is ourselves. Open our heart. And M is mercy. E is a special excitement. Today, we here at the True Church family, we open our arms up wide to welcome you. So as God welcome you also. Thank you. And certainly you are welcome. That's my sister, y'all. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Praise the Lord. On behalf of our pastor and the Truth Church, my task is to tell you about this occasion. What is the occasion? Why are we here? Amen. That's a good question, isn't it? We had a president some years ago who said, I'm glad you asked that question so I can tell you the answer. The occasion here is to celebrate. Celebrate. Amen. God has always had a people who were, would step out and celebrate the goodness of God. You remember David? When David fought the Philistines, he beat tens of thousands to Saul thousands. And he celebrated. He danced so hard that he came out of his clothes. That was celebration. Amen. We don't have to pull our clothes off, but you are welcome to celebrate here today. This is an occasion of celebration of God's people here on the earth being divinely aligned with heaven and earth. That means we are vertically aligned with heaven and we're horizontally aligned with God's people. Amen. Praise God. The plan for celebration has been in process for the last 11 years. We started out over on uh, Highway 6. Well, actually, we started out in Takawal in the pastor's uh, study in his music studio with him, and then he added his children, and then my wife and I went down and joined him, and uh, there was always a little saying, and I won't tell you what it is until the end. You'll figure it out. But the second three years, we planted a seed the third three years, we started cultivating the soil. We moved out to Oxford. Amen. We worked in Oxford for a season, and God had a reason to bring us back to Baseville and the rural, and we started harvesting. The last three years, which we're in the second of the last three years, praise God, he's given us a new land to expand. Amen. That's why we're celebrating. That is why we are celebrating here today. Amen. So as we gather here today with the intentions to celebrate the victory of obtaining a new worship center. And in closing, I want to make it quick, short, and to the point. In closing, I'd like to share something with you in behalf of our pastor, something that I think is very, very appropriate. It's fitting and proper to say this. And it's a poem that I learned when I was a little boy. I didn't learn it, but I heard it a lot, and I just never really learned it, but I do want to share it with you in behalf of our pastor. Somebody said it couldn't be done, but he with a chuckle replied that maybe it couldn't, but he wouldn't be one who wouldn't say so until he tried. So he buckled right in with a trace of a grin. He started to sing as he tackled the thing that couldn't be done, but he did it. Some folks said, oh, he'll never do that. At least no one has ever done that, having church on Saturday at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Who does he think he is? But the first thing we knew, he had begun it. With a lift of his chin and, the, and a bit of a grin, without any doubting or quitting, he started to sing as he tackled a thing that couldn't be done. But Victor did it. There are thousands to tell you that it can't be done. There are thousands to tell you and prophesy your failure. There are thousands to point out to you, one by one, the dangers that await to assail you. Just take off your coat and go to it. Start to sing as you tackle the thing that cannot be done, and you will do it by the grace of God. Now, 
I want to tell you this man that God has called and appointed for such a season as this is worthy and the ministry that God has given him is worthy to be celebrated. Victor, Lawrence, Emmanuel, there he go again, McDowell Sr. Amen. That's the occasion. Have a good time and let's enjoy the Lord. Amen.
glorified as if God hadn't done anything for us. But nobody know your story. How many of you know that God has done something for you today? Who woke you up this morning? Who watched over you last night? See, how many of you got children in here? Somebody lost their child last night. But God protected our child. So you ought to praise God just for protecting your children. Glory to God. Somebody loved one died on last night, but our loved ones are still living. We ought to praise God for that today. Somebody had to go to the hospital on last night, but God didn't allow us to go to the hospital. And you know what? We ought to praise God for that. They didn't roll you down the aisle. You walked in today. That's enough to praise God for today. Glory to God. You say, well, I'm going to wait till I get to heaven. This is just a rehearsal down. When I get to heaven, I'm really going to praise his name. Well, you don't even know how to praise him down here. So how are you going to praise him when you get to heaven? Glory to God. He's good to us. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Now, if you're scared to praise him, I'll move or either you can move. Glory to God. Because, see, the thing about it, we got a man of God in here that's going to bring the word this afternoon, that's able to preach the word to us this afternoon, and we don't want him to get up into things dead. He said anything that dead need to be buried, right? Last thing, and I'm going to sit down. You know, funerals used to be sad, but people praise God at funerals now. Ain't no funeral today. See, I, 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 I was talking to the pastor here, and, and he was telling me the story of how they got to church. See, I'm in a church at Crowder, Mississippi, and we got a little debt on our church. But when he told me that the Lord gave him this debt, gave it to him debt free, oh, that's enough to praise God for. <laughs> Hallelujah. Gave him four acres of land debt free. Didn't have to pay a penny for it. That's enough to praise God for today. Hallelujah. Nobody but God did it. Nobody but God. Nobody but God. Nobody but God did it. Hallelujah. I know y'all saying, you know what? Break it. Can I just give my testimony real quick? Give me a, it's about time for preaching. Give me the little monitors on the ground. And let, let's, let's, let's hype it up. It's time party time now. You know, when the party really gets started, stuff start getting loud around here. So we start hitting the monitors and everything, get the setup, every round goes higher and higher. Can, can, can I just give my testimony five seconds? Started in the, 19, what's that? 90, no, 2004. I just want to make sure if I remember, no. 2004, all the people that you see back here, I prayed by God who to be on the program. Every minister and pastor back here has shepherded a small church. See, it, it's easy to talk to folks when you got a thousand folks. <laughs> but talk to me when ain't nobody but you and the pews. Talk to me when there's nobody coming in. Talk to me when you had to pay more money than anybody else that's sitting in the church to keep the lights on. Talk to me about the God that you served in. 2004 we started, and all these people that I was with Pastor Wilson here at New Hope started doing some crazy stuff, doing it on Saturdays and still playing on Sundays. Folks talked about me, told me crazy, wasn't gonna work, but I had a vision. Like Martin Luther King, I had a dream. And the vision, the book tells me now to write the vision and make it plain. That them that read it may run with it. 
He said, though it seemed like a long time. Woo. He said, it's just surely come to pass. I'm going to jaywalk right here. 2004, we moved uptown. 2005. Nobody but me and my family. I started out with nobody for seven months. Nobody in that studio but me in the chairs. Nobody. I set the chairs up. I broke the chairs down. I was a musician. I was a pastor. I was the usher. And I was a cleanup man. Went uptown. My family, my mother and father finally come with me and we moved uptown. The rent was $600 a month, not counting the lights. One but two or three of us. But I remember the scripture. He said, well, two or three. I, I remember that he said, if you ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if he heard me, I have the petition of which we desired of him. I went there. We... We turned major place inside out. We went through the walls, redecorated, went across the hall, went this way and every way. Still didn't gain nobody about two or three folks. So we about eight, eight deep. We eight deep. But we're doing some eight deep crazy stuff. Some crazy face. See, you don't need big numbers. Because truth be told, everybody that's in the church ain't working no way. All right, sir. Uh, okay, okay, okay. We turned around and finally thought that we had a land. The land is right across the street. The property right here, Pastor Townsend, I think I saw him. Pastor Townsend was in that church. And then when they got out, the man told us that we could have the church. We packed up everything that we had. Turned around, about to move out, and the man turned around and said, we ain't going to give it to you. I retract back the base field. I'm mad with God because I'm like, God, you told me. But how many people know that my time, it ain't God time? We turned around and, and they sent me three years ago, this same day, we were moving into our new property in Oxford. Y'all catch this just singing that. Did, did y'all catch that? Three years ago, the same exact day, we were in Oxford on Thacker Road in a 3,300 square foot church that we thought was our stopping place. We stayed there increase, start growing, start growing. But God said, I got something else for you. The man turned around and sold it from up under us. Now I'm bad with God. I'm just sharing my testimony, y'all. I'm just sharing my testimony. I'm mad with him. I'm saying, I'm looking at a lot of preachers, how they got stuff. And here I am, I'm still serving. I'm still running up and down the highway. I'm still playing the organ for folk. And God, here I, I don't even have nothing. Turn around and how many people know that just because you cry and holler to God don't mean nothing? <laughs> I'm going to bless somebody here today. And maybe you're a preacher and you're about to give up the towel, but I'm going to tell you, hold on to his hands. God's unchanging hand. We turned around and moved to the conference center. Moved to the conference center. It was $2,800 a month. Well, we didn't have that, Mr. Towns. We didn't have that. But I know God. And every time I say, if it's small enough where you can see it, God ain't in it. We were in the conference center. We turned around, and that came. We lost that. We gained four acres of land right across. When you leave back out, you go and you see Truth City right there. We got four acres of land. And so we were getting ready to do some work on that land to get prepared to build a church, whether it's small, whatever. As I was going out there to do some dirt work, the man where we are in the back came up and said, hey, I got something I want you to see. I said, what you got for me to see? We go in the back along the road, we got four acres of land, 3,300 square foot high, and another 1,600 square foot high. We turned around and got that. So now we got four acres, another four acres. Okay, y'all keep up with me now. That's, that's eight, right? We turned around and I wanted all of it. We turned around, I want all of it. I'm greedy because I believe that God's supposed to have the best. So I said, God, your word can't lie. We turned around, got four acres, four acres in the back. We got one more because they tried to put the bread house in front of our land. Ooh, what you do that for? 
they put the bread house, try to put the bread house, and how many know that prayer does work? I turned around and spoke and told them we need to pray against that. That bread house won't come before our four acres. Well, it's five acres before our four. Well, we got one acre that he said that he was not going to do it. So now we got five acres. Then we came back and got four more. So now we got nine, and now we got four back there. That's 13, plus two houses. Now, y'all, come on. I'm going to show you the shouting part. That's why you see me just getting up, because I don't deserve it. But God looked up on me and said, son, I got something for you. We were getting ready for a tent revival. And at that time, it was snowing and all of this, and I wasn't going to have a tent revival. So I said, Lord, which one? There's a church right here and a church over there. And I said, God, which one? God said, go up here and ask them, can you use the church? We came up here and asked him. He didn't change word with us, gave us the church the whole week. When we walked in it, I said, church, I believe that this is our church. If you came to the revival, y'all can attest to this. I said, everybody that's at the revival, I don't care what church you're in, I want you to believe with me that this is our church. We use every inch of it because he said every place at your feet, So we use every inch of this place so I can put God in the remembrance of his word. He said that everywhere my feet go, it belongs to me. So we walk this place and we thank God for it. Four days later. The pastor called me and said, I took another job in Bruce. Our church is dwindling down to five folks and we want to give you the church. And everybody in here that got a dream, don't let it die. He said, we voted. When he took a job, they came back and they voted. That's the most people that they have had up in here in 10 years. He said, we voted unanimously, 32 to 0, to give the Truth Church five acres of land and a fully furnished. Woo! I got I got to get out of the way. We got we got to preach in the other ministers. So when you see me jumping up, woo! When you see me waving my hand, when you see me saying, "Thank you, Jesus." You know, look where God has brought me from. Woo! They say, I, I got to praise. I got to praise and I got to get it out. I got to praise. You know that? I, I got to praise. I got to praise and I got to get it out. I got to praise. Church Day.
they was known by their testimony. You ought to tell somebody what the Lord has done for you. Yes, he will. He'll turn that thing around, Apostle. Man, I feel you. <laughs> I really feel you. You know, God knows how to do things. He knows how to bring us to the places that we need to be at the right time. Apostle, I need you standing right in the front of me, if you don't mind. Thank God for you. You're a young preacher compared to me. And I'm listening at your struggles. Listen at what you've been through. I can feel you. I've been there. I have the T-shirt to show for it. But if you hadn't ever been through anything, you won't have the testimony like you have now. And it's not like you're trying to fake it till you make it. Living proof that God is a miracle worker. He's still working miracles. You have been given a momentous task to shepherd the flock of God whom he's made you overseers. But one thing I can say, take this verse with you. Philippians 1 and 6. Being confident of this one thing, that he who has started a work in you is able to perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. He doesn't start anything that he cannot finish. You know, the devil in hell could not have stopped you. They could have shot the arrows, the fairy dots at you. They would not have killed you because God has started a good work in you. He's not going to stop until he performs it. I just want you to say this after me, and then I'll give you a charge. Uh, but uh, I'm just thankful today uh, to be a part. Because the reason why I'm, I'm thankful to be a part of it, Apostle, is because I'm just sick and tired of fictitious people. I'm just sick and tired of them. They talk a good game, but when the time comes for the main event, they're nowhere to be found. All your so-called friends that ran with you when things was going good, but when time got rough, you looked around, they were nowhere to be found. So if you will, just when I give you that you just say, with God help, I will. Apostle McDowell, having summarily affirmed by the help of the Almighty God and through the inspiration that comes from our Lord Jesus Christ, that you will abide in faith and that according to the interests of your heart, in serving God and administering the affairs of the church, you will do so to the best of your ability and opportunities. With God help. Apostle McDowell, having made known to this assembly the covenant thus spoken to you, Apostle McDowell will hereby recognize for the office to which you have been duly elected to pastor the truth ministry. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead 
at his appearance and kingdom. Preach the word. In season. Out of season. Rebuke. Reprove. Exhort with long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to them themselves teachers having itching ears. You got the truth ministry. God's word is truth. Jesus, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Let every man be a liar and let God be true. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fable. But watch. Thou in all things endure affliction. Make full proof of your ministry. This is my charge to you, Apostle MacDowell. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine upon you and give you peace. You be blessed. Good evening to Pastor Apostle MacDial, to our agenda guy, Pastor Wilson, to all of the other pastors and ministers that are here today, to all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, as I sit and listen to Brother MacDial, I thought about what we spoke this morning when you come to the end of your rope. Well, yes, and it seems like that Dr. McDowell had come to his end of his rope. But we found out through the woman of, uh, uh, that had lost her husband, the widow, yes. that Elijah had to have her to see what she needed and see that she already had what she needed. God have to, he gives us a test. Amen. And you passed the test. God said, Brother MacDowell, what would you have me to do? And then when you told him, he said, now, uh, what do you have with you? God had to let you see you already had the victory. But you were seeing what you didn't have instead of seeing who was over all things. And that was the God Almighty. God works in his time. He do everything on his time. We have to learn to wait. Amen. We have a preacher ready to preach. Uh, my brother, he's silly and ain't got good sense and look like it's coming off on me. Amen. But I thank God for the Holy Spirit. Amen. Church, I'm not going to ask you to stand just yet. I got a book here, so if I start too long. Just pull my shit coattail. Because I'm bad about doing it. I'll do it in a minute. There are a few words that can express my excitement for this celebration of believers. This day is full of hope for the future. You have discerned in the gift of preaching and teaching and have called him to serve a mom with you. In the congregation tradition, it is the body of Christ, all of us together, that bless this pastor's ministry. It is the Spirit of God through the witnessing congregation that declares the joyful discernment and call of Pastor McDowell as your minister. Your presence here today is a vital expression of your faith. But after this sacred celebration end, then what? This day is not just about today. It's about all of you and how you will partner together to do God's will. No successful, transformative, healthy ministry is ever a one-person show. 
if church and pastor are to form a partnership that is strong and enduring, you must honor each other as Christ has already honored you. You're all in this together. Given this, I charge you as God gathered people at the truth church with these things. First, as your years unfold, expect to change. That is because the spirit still brews over us. Christ still walks among us and God still calls us. As your relationship unfolds, time will continue to work changes because all authentic ministry changes us. Expect to be comforted by this as your pastor established bonds of affection with you, but also challenge and confront it as well. Second, remember that you're all called together as the body of Christ for God's great purpose. God don't need another fan club. God need workers in the vineyard. God, Paul reminds us in Ephesians, there's one body and one spirit. And each of us was given Christian gifts. Some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. Not for personal glorification, but for, so the saints would be equipped for the work of ministry, for the building of the body of Christ. This world, this part of the world needs to know God's love and grace through each of you. This is a partnership of people and pastor on behalf of a mighty and merciful God. You are embarking on holy work. Third, Pastor Madal ministry, honor it. While this is a partnership, there's also a peculiar setting, a part that happens when you grant a minister the privilege of the pulpit and he commits to this ministry before a trusting, yearning congregation. Ministry can be lonely, and often there's little to go on to know if you're making a difference. A pastor is more likely to hear the vocal complainers than the quiet supporters, and is under numerous pressure to wade into conflict with wisdom beyond human capacity and his great personal. So honor Pastor McDowell's ministry. Pray for him, contact him, text him, phone him. However, contact him with words of encouragement. Thank him for being a preacher, pastor, and prophet in your midst. And honor him by challenging him, asking for clarification, sharing your viewpoint. Be full and real and honest in your support. The Apostle Paul frequently began his letter with wonderful words of thanksgiving as here in his letter to the Philippians. I thank my God every time I remember you. Not just occasionally, but every time. Constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you. Constantly and for everyone because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. Paul goes on to say, I'm confident of this that the one thing who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think that this way about all of you because you hold me in your heart. For all of you share in God's grace with me. Indeed, today affirms once again that all of you are in God's grace and are in partners in the sharing of the gospel with joy, thanksgiving, and prayer. God's good work will be manifest among you. If you give thanks for each other, honor each other, and remember that God has called you to this time and place for a season, may you perceive this with the excitement and hope that only the Spirit can give, and may your years together be marred with great faithfulness. Church, if you would just stand, the true church family, will you stand? And as much as the solemn act of installation involves manual commitment and obligation, I call upon this fellowship of the truth church to rise and unite in a covenant of dedication. Now some questions here. Do you affirm your confidence in Pastor Victor McDowell and promise your prayers for God's blessing on his ministry? Do you rededicate yourselves to this end? Do you affirm your membership in Christ's church? 
and your fellowship in this congregation with those who have attained a light, precious faith, renewing your vows of fidelity to our Lord Jesus Christ and your allowance to his church. Do you solemnly covenant to work together with your pastor to extend the gospel in his purity and power in this community and throughout the world? And as faithful servants of the Lord, to give your pastor your utmost support in every way according to your ability and opportunity. As God, as your witness, I so charge you. God bless you and God keep you. Amen. If you would remain standing, Pastor, if you would come down, amen. We're going to dedicate the building, and not only the building, be dedicating you back to the Lord, that God's will will be done in this place. Amen. Because without God, we can do nothing. Without him, we would only fail. And what gets me is people cannot get excited about other people's things. We can't get excited until we are being blessed. But he told his story, but I already knew his story. Amen. What he did from the beginning up to where he is now. And many times, wanting to throw in the towel because it seemed like he was doing what the Lord wanted him to do. And everybody else was, seemed like they was progressing. And he felt like he was spinning in the mud. Amen. But the thing about it is, some people don't know, won't get on board until this thing starts progressing. And then they'll say, look at what we did. And you hadn't done anything. You hadn't been off in the trenches to get to where uh, others are. Amen. And then you're still on board until things, while things are going good. And then when things start getting bad, you jump ship again. But the true worshipers ought to be st stand up and be counted. And he said, they that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. Amen. 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 I've never seen so many folks in the church that turn up their nose so much. But I have learned that when you do it to me, you're not doing it to me. Because you didn't call me, God called me. So you're turning your nose up at God, telling God, God, you didn't know what you were doing. But see, God knew what he was doing. Amen. When he was a little boy, when he was being babied all the time, getting me in trouble, God knew what he was doing. When he made me go to the field and chop, he did it because I wouldn't go outside and play with him. A hundred and something degree weather and he wanted to play. Amen. But I look up to him, amen, as a man of God with wisdom from God. And I thank God that he imparted some things inside of me that God is using me if it is. He said, and I said, oh, man, you're just talking stuff. But he tell me all the time, see, I told you. Uh -huh, amen. I'm fixing to pray. Amen. My prayer is going to be real short. Because God's will, we just want God's will to be done. And you have to recognize when God's will is being done, it's not always good. Well, if you don't believe me, go to the scripture and ask Jesus. Jesus came down. And he tabernacled here. And he always did good. And most people that went to him didn't go to him for what he had. They just went for what they wanted. Amen. And I know I, I, out of the years, there are a lot of people that have gone to Apostle McDowell, not for what he could give them, but what they wanted from him. And when they got what they wanted, then they went on about their business. And that's how they did Jesus. 
And then as he was on his way to the cross, I mean, he, 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 he prayed for himself, he prayed for his disciples, and he prayed for people. And even in the midst of them praying for him, they still said, crucify him. And I don't care how many times that he stand here and tell you what thus said the Lord. Some of you still in your mind, you said, still crucify him because I don't want to hear what he got to say. Lord, have mercy. Hallelujah. Then he went out on Calvary and he gave his hands to the nails, ribbons to his feet. And he, he died for your sins and mine. And he cried out, why? Lord, why, why hast thou forsaken me? I preached that this morning from the 22nd chapter of Psalm. David said, why, Lord? Why, why? It seemed like, Lord, you're so far from me. And that's how he felt sometimes, that the Lord was just so far from him. But sometimes God has to take us around the wilderness to get us to where we are. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we come now. In the name of Jesus. You're the father of Abraham. You're the father of Isaac and you're the father of Jacob. You're the creator of all things. You are a shepherd that sits high and looks low and you know all about us God and you made us in your image, made us just a little lower than the angels, God. And, and, and we come this, this afternoon just to say thank you, God. Thank you for this day, God, because you knew that this day was coming all the way before creation. Lord, we come to just magnify your name on today. We come to praise your name because we realize that all that is done, God, you did it. We realize that man couldn't do it. But God, you're able to do anything. We lift Apostle McDowell before you right now, God. We thank you for his breath of spirit today, God. We thank you, God, for allowing him to stay on the battlefield. When men were talking about him, when men was scandalizing his name, God, we thank you for allowing him to continue to look to the hills from which cometh this help. For we realize that all his help comes from you, God. We thank you, God, for allowing him to have a vision for that you've given him, God. Allowing him to have a mind stayed on thee. Lord, we ask that you just continue to elevate him. We recognize, God, that there are some that feel like they're so high. But we thank you for his humble spirit. We recognize, God, that there are some that he's helped. And they never look back his way. Lord, we thank you for him having a spirit. To not get even, God, but to just continue to lift him up in prayer. Lord, we ask that you would just continue to crown his head with wisdom and knowledge. But most of all, in understanding of your word, God, that he would be able to stand continually and tell a dying word that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Thank you, God, for the gift that you placed inside of him. And then, Lord, we thank you for him pardon his gift in others Lord we just thank you for what you're doing today but we rec recognize that this is just the beginning we thank you God for the people that you're going to send here that's hungry for the word God we bind Satan right now in the name of Jesus. We bind gossip right now we bind backbiting right now we bind back telling it Right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we ask that you loose your anointing in this place, loose your peace in this place, loose your joy in this place. That, Lord, that you would have free course in this place. And, Lord, we recognize and we thank you. What you're going to do on all of these acres of land. 
We thank you, God. We thank you for the people that's going to be jealous. We even thank you for the town that's going to be jealous. But God, we just thank you for what you're going to do. We thank you for the buildings that you're going to put on this land, God. We, we thank you right now, God. We thank you for the people that's going to be employed on this land, God. We thank you right now, God. We thank you for people that are being able to be helped on this land, God. We thank you for people that's going to be able to be housed on this land, God. The homeless, God, will have somewhere to go. The people that don't have food will have places to eat, God. We thank you for it right now, God. We thank you, God, for people coming in this place, being healed, being set free, being delivered, that on the way to the hospital, God, that they will be able to stop by this hospital, and Lord, you'll be able to heal them right here, and they won't even have a bill. We thank you for it right now, God. We thank you for some that want to stop, but won't stop, God. But then, in the midst of passing in the shadow, God, that they will be healed in the midst of passing in the shadow. That they will be blessed in the midst of passing in the shadow, God. We thank you right now, God. We thank you for people coming from the north, south, east, and west, God. We thank you for the resources coming, God. We thank you right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the people that are already here, God, but we thank you for people that's going to come that have a mind to work to bring glory to your name, God. We thank you right now. And Lord, we thank you for him being able to carry out your vision And every time that he do what it is that you tell him to do. And the church being on his side. Lord, we just thank you right now for the resources coming. And as the resources come, God, that everything that he start to do, that when he finish, it will already be paid for. We thank you, God. You said we have not because we ask not, God. And we ask and believe in the day that is already done. Thank you, Lord, for this church. Thank you for this ground. Bless it right now, God. We dedicate it back to you, God. And all that is done, we want you to get the glory. We want you to get the honor, and we want you to get the praise. Thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do through Pastor McDowell, through the members of truth. We thank you, and we give you glory. We give it back to you, Lord. And as you told Solomon, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from that wicked way. Then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin and heal the land. Lord, people are going to see this land and be able to know that they can be healed. We thank you. We glorify you. Thank you for Pastor McDowell. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Lord Jesus, bless him right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray and ask it all. We claim it by your word. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Pastor McDowell, this is your season. This is your season. Amen. I don't care who come against you right now. He's going to bring some people that's going to try to come against you. But when they come against you, they're going to have to give you what they have. They came to hurt you, but they're going to end up blessing you. 
Amen. Amen. Those preachers that got their mouth on you, Lord have mercy. See, I got sense enough to know that every preacher that preaching ain't for us. He's going to take some of those preachers that got their mouth on you, and if they don't watch it, you'll have everything they got. Amen. If he was able to do it through Is for Israel, he's able to do it for you. Amen. You're a true prophet of God. He said, touch not mine anointed one and do my prophet no harm. Be encouraged, man. Amen. You've, you've hung in this long? You ain't seen nothing yet. Amen. God just wanted to, he said, he, he giving you some of the stuff for your trouble. But still you ain't seen the half hadn't been told. Amen. Amen. You know those churches you was talking about where you got all these preachers and you're going to put some of them in. Amen. It's on the way. God didn't give him all those preachers for no reason. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. Come on in. Present our speaker. Amen. And after he presents the speaker, his visitor chapel choir here. They got a representative that's going to come, and he's going to uh, sing. And then after the introduction of the song, the next four years, he'll be our speaker. You are now at the Truth International Highway. <laughs> You're about to board flight number one, one, one. Our pilot for today is a veteran pilot that you don't have to worry about it, that he can take you to altitudes of 10,000, to 20,000, to 30,000. Can I tell you that your round trip ticket is already paid for, that your destination is heaven. And I can tell you that the pilot for today is none other than the doctor, the great Reverend Bishop Overseer. Edgar Skirlock. But don't worry, because at the head of the nose of the plane, for all of you that's scared of flying, is God. On the left wing right there, for all of y'all that's scared, that's sitting on my left, is Jesus, the Word. And for all of you that don't want to fly on the left, but you want to fly on the right, don't worry about it, that we got the Holy Ghost on this side. So he said, now, we got to go up to heaven. Keep your seatbelt on. And when it's time to take the seatbelt off, the light will go on. And you are free to shout. You are free to jump. And you are free to do what God has called you to do. I present to others and introduce to some our speaker for the hour, Dr. Edgar Skirlock. Lord, if I find favor in your sight, Lord, please hear my heart cry. I'm desperately waiting to be where you are. I'll cross the hottest desert. I'll travel near or far for your glory. I will do anything just to see you, to behold you as my king for your glory i will do anything 
anything just to see you to behold you as my king lord if i find favor in your sight lord please hear my heart cry i'm desperately waiting to be where you are i'll cross the hottest desert I'll travel near or far for your glory. I will do anything just to see you, to behold you as my King for your glory. I will do anything just to see you, to behold you as my king. I want to be where you are. I got to be where you are. Anybody want to be where he is? I want to be where you are. I got to be where you are. I want to be where. I got to be where. Anybody want to be where he is? I got to be. I want to be where you are. Joy is where you are. Happiness is where you are. I want to be where you are. Oh, I want to be where. Oh, for your glory. I will do anything just to see you, to behold you as my king. I want to be where you are. I got to be where you are. Anybody wanna be Sure wanna be Get away from some of these earthquakes Get away from some of these rapes I wanna be a Father God, we thank you. Lord, we give you praise. God, we give you all the glory. Lord, you're worthy to be praised. We thank you for all things. We thank you for everything that you're doing, everything that you've done, and God, everything that you're going to do. Satan, the blood of a crucified lamb is against you. Father, we thank you for even this moment of ministry. Thank you for this man in ministry. Thank you for this move of ministry. Thank you for the message about this ministry. And we thank you for the miracles that are being birthed and wrought in this ministry. Father, I pray now 
that you would release over me the headship anointing. Lord, I pray for the wisdom of Solomon. Give me the worship of David. Grant me the word of Christ that your people shall leave down better than the way they came up. And God will give your name the honor, the praise, and the glory. In Jesus' name, let every heart say amen. Amen. And amen. Y'all come on, give God some praise in this place. Amen, y'all. Come on, you can do better than that. Come on, give God. Y'all come on, give God some praise in this place. Amen. Listen, I can't help. I'm, I'm one of those people who are affected by other people's success. And I don't get jealous, but I get joyful. Because I believe that when God elevates one of his seeds, I believe there's a great harvest he's trying to bless. If I have three people that's just peacock proud, I mean just glad on top of glad about this place of habitation, come on and let's give God glory. Come on, act like it's your church. Come on. Some of y'all, some of y'all being too calm for me. Some, some of y'all being too pretty for me. Some, some of y'all being too cool for me. I know the bad girl here, but give God glory. Oh, come on, come on. We come. You know what? There are people when they put up club, they don't have weekend celebration. When when people are trying to build new businesses, but God is birthing a new ministry in this city. The city ought to be shining down. Come on, come on! Somebody child just got snatched out the streets. Somebody child just got snatched out of prison. Somebody child just put down. Uh, to God be the glory. It's good for us to be here. Y'all, y'all sit down. It's good for us to be here. Man, we are grateful. We are grateful for Apostle Victor MacDowell. Amen. He is our friend, our brother, our neighbor. Amen. Our co-laborer in this thing called preaching and pastoring. Amen. We're grateful for this plethora of pastors and preachers. I dare not try to call everybody out name by name. I'm just going to say it's good to be here amongst these giants. And I do know one thing that if my voice goes, I can just pass the mic and surely one of them can finish the work. Amen, amen, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Pastor McDowell, been toiling for eleven years, yes? Eleven years? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. God says there's a man standing for each year of toiling that you've experienced in this thing called birthing this new ministry. But the thing about it, where one man stands for one year, there's a, there is a truckload of experience that God is about to dump on you. Listen, I need somebody to understand that there's a prophetic shift in the atmosphere. I need three people to understand that if you're looking for church as normal, if you're looking for protocolic preaching, it's not about to happen. I feel a shift in, in this place. I, I, feel, I feel a need to just let somebody know that eyes have not seen and, and ears have not heard. Now, I've been sitting here trying to hold my peace, but Pastor MacDonald, I feel a birth of a great nation about to happen. Oh! this side of soul. Yes. Pastor McDowell. Pastor McDowell, I was listening to Pastor Wilson and he was talking about preachers who had their, their mouths on you. Let me let me let me go ahead and because that Satan 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 thank you Holy Spirit Satan has has he has an agent here today. I, I need for you to understand Pastor everybody that's here today ain't here because they're happy about what's going on. There, there, there's one person here because they're mad because what God is about to do they're looking and said oh God I didn't think it was going to happen but Pastor McDowell this is what God told me to let you know what you've been prepared in does not identify what you've been prepared for 
What you were preparing in was a little small building. What you were working in was in a small territory. But God was preparing you for the nations. Matter of fact, look at the nations. Look at the nations. Somebody shall glory. Okay, okay. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6, and I'm getting down, I'm, I'm sitting down. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Huh. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6, when you're there, signify by standing. And this is the last book of the Pentateuch. This is the last book of the Mosaic writings, the books of the law, where Moses completes his assignment, informs the people of God's assignment. Listen to what Moses says here in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse number 1. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that ye might do them in the land whether ye go to possess it. That thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee, thou and thy son and thy son's son, your grandchildren, all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. Hear therefore, O truth church, and observe to do as Apostle MacDow says, that it may be well with this place, and that ye may increase mightily in Batesville, Mississippi, as the Lord God of thy fathers has promised thee in Panola County, in the land that floweth with milk. I need somebody to say, it's sticky right here. And honey, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. Lengthily reading, but watch, and thou shalt teach them diligently. Pastor MacDowell, seven months, nobody joined the church. There would have been those that would have said, forget it, I'm going back. And thou shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thine house, and on thy gates. Get ready to shout, Zion. And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee up out of the city limits and put you on the outskirts of the city which he swore unto your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Abraham, the promised man. Isaac, the promised change. And Jacob, the promised king. To give thee great and goodly cities which thou buildest not. Look out. Verse 11. And houses full of good things. Did not you just testify about two houses you didn't even build? A church that you didn't build? But it looked like it's already built which thou fill not, and wells dig, which thou diggest not, and vineyards, and olive trees, which thou plantest not, when thou shalt have eaten and be full. Then, here we go. Truth, y'all need to look at this. Then, beware, lest thou forget the Lord which brought thee forth out of the city limits of Panola County and from renting a house. 
You sit right there from the house of bondage. That means that they owed something. Whenever you owe somebody something, that means you are indebted to them. When you are indebted to them, that means you are a slave to them. When you are a slave to them, that means they have you in bondages. You got to move when they say move. You got to say when they say say. So listen, I'm going to put y'all in a place. It don't matter if it's 12 o'clock midnight or 12 o'clock morning. Y'all can shout and ain't nobody going to say nothing. May God add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy and divine word. You may be seated. You may be seated. Pastor McDowell, Apostle McDowell and Truth Church, this great galaxy of prognosticators of the gospel, I want to talk for a couple of minutes. Y'all give me about nine minutes, and we'll sit down. But I want to talk about if your eyes see it, you could have it. If your eyes see it, you could have it. I need, I need for you to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, adjust your vision. Say, neighbor, get your heart in line with your wants. If your eyes see it, and God said you could have it, say, shout, it's yours. Pastor McDowell, Pastor McDowell, I have just come from a tedious work week and on this work week I had an instrument of Satan trying to vex my soul. Uh, Y'all do know that Pastor Creflo Dollar has exposed a lot of people's fears and failures dealing with this thing called faith. Shh. Now, it's an indictment against the church when because one man dreams big and you dream small. It's an indictment against the church because we join in with the world and say that Creflo ought to be ashamed for asking for how much was it? And you know, it's kind of strange. There are people that know how much this plane is, but don't know how much the budget of their church. I came here to lose a couple of friends. And I was walking down the floor, and I was hearing people talk about Pastor Kreft, low dollar talking about he ought to be ashamed of himself. He could have asked for that money to do something else with that money. And I just want to suggest to someone, if your dream don't put fear in the heart of your enemy, keep it to yourself. Because God is a God of greatness. When you look at what God is able to do, when you look at who he is, why do you minimize your thought pattern about his availability because of someone's minute thought pattern thinking that it's too big? And I need somebody to understand that what you have in life is not predicated upon somebody else saying it's okay, but what you have is predicated upon what you ask. Okay, now faith is the substance of things hoped for with the evidence of things not seen. Shame on you because you got faith to walk on gravel, but I got faith to walk on golden roads. Shame on you because you only have faith to always rent, but I got faith to one day own. Shame on you because you got faith that is always going to be month to month. But look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, say, I don't have month to month faith. I got a minute to minute. If he did it before, surely he could do it again. The text, the text. Y'all, y'all sit down. Y'all sit down. I just believe that the body of Christ, we are making God small when he's ready to be big. Last night, two men fought for 12 rounds, made over $300 million, and nobody got mad. Nobody said they were greedy. But if Apostle McDowell stood up and said, I need seven people to sell $500, girl, he done lost his mind. I ain't finna give all that right there. I need somebody to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor it's worth the investment. The text, 
the text. The text, the text this evening unfolds. The text this evening unfolds because we see where God has one of his mighty men of valor speaking to a group of people who've been working but not worshiping. I need for you to understand that the children of Israel, they had been in bondage and God had seen their afflictions. He had heard their cries. And the Bible says that when God got tired of hearing their cries, then he sends a stuttering, stampering speaker, a preacher with a bent stick in his hand. Went down to the land of Egypt, gave the message, and let them know, let my people go. When they got delivered, look what happened. The first thing they did when they got in trouble, they started looking for graves. I need to talk to three people up in here that whenever trouble come, be careful looking for graves. Matter of fact, there's somebody up in here right now. You were looking for a grave earlier this week. You got in trouble with some bills. You started thinking of going back down to the casino. The casino ain't nothing but a grave. Y'all ain't got to say nothing up in here to me. There's somebody up in here right now. You in a good relationship. Maybe you and your sweet thing, boo thing, ain't really clicking right now. But you remember a grave. They said, baby, I'll tell you whatever you want to hear. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, close your graves. Y'all really ain't talking to me up in here. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, put a cap on your grave. Moses. Moses is bringing these people. Only thing they've done for all this time was worked and not worship. Worked and not worship worked and not worship that's why our churches are stagnated now we got people that want to work but then don't want to worship that's why our praise and worship settings are so cold and stagnant because we got people that want to work but don't want to worship because the bible said they that worship him must worship him and spirit Moses, here Moses, Moses talking to these people. He's giving them a word, but the only thing they've done was just work and not worship. So here it is, they get down to the body of water. That's too big for them. And now God has to use the bent stick that's in the stuttering preacher's hand to show forth a miracle that he's able to do whatever he can do. I want to just pause right quick. I'm going to get out the car, leave it idling. I'm going to leave the lights on. You can get in if you want to. But I would like to suggest to the body of Christ today that until the people buy the vision, then the vision itself is going to be stagnant because we need people that's going to ride with the vision, not against the vision. I know you don't understand everything, but some stuff ain't for you to understand. Some stuff is just for you to get on board. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I don't understand everything, but God has proven himself that I know that God is in his life. God, God speaks and he's telling them, I need for y'all to be ready. I'm going to bring y'all into a place of provision. But now if you notice, in chapter number five, Moses tells the people, he says, listen, God didn't make this covenant with your fathers. I need to say this for that person that always come into church talking about what your father done did. Sometimes the reason why the church had so many pastors was because your father was on the deacon's ministry. Y'all ain't gonna say amen up in here. It messes me up when you go to church and somebody always talk about my, my father laid the cornerstone. My father purchased the land. My father did this. My father did that. But your father didn't get saved. And now every time you stand up, you talk about a dead man. What about Jesus? What about Jesus died? What about he gave his life? What about he purchased? That he, the text. he says, Pastor Townsend, Pastor Townsend he's, he says, he says, I don't want to talk to you in the mindset of your fathers because your father's mindset was limited. 
We're no longer in the days of ministry where you can come to church with just a Bible. Our children are going to school being educated by 21st century technology. And you still got some folk that want to give $13 on a, on a program talking about it's pastor's aid. No, baby, it ain't pastor's aid. So into the pastor and it'll aid your life. He said, I need, I, need, I need to talk to y'all because I need for y'all to understand that God is about to bring y'all into a place where you never expect it to be. But now in order for you all to enjoy this, y'all need to make sure you remember his word. Touch about, I'm an interactive preacher. Some preachers say, I don't think it take all that telling your neighbor this, telling your neighbor that. I'm, I'm an interactive. I think that when you fellowship in church, it births fellowship. That means if I keep on talking to you, sooner or later, we're going to have something in common. And you're going to get tired of me telling you. You're going to start telling me, I got you. The Lord is good. <laughs> but look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, remember the word. I just believe that it's time that our ministries move forward in our presentation. How in the world can you have a 19th century mentality, operate with 20th century merchandise, and be effective in the 21st century? Our children are educated by 21st century. Our children are driving vehicles that have 21st century. Our homes are plush with 21st century. Why do we need to come to church and folks still trying to put padlock on those? Why, why are we still scared to use credit cards in church? Pastor, stand up and say, we're going to start using PayPal for our tithes and offering. Good, I, I don't trust them. I'm not going to give them my PIN number, but you give it to Macy's every day. But you give it to KFC every day. But you give it to Wally World every day. But you give it to Dollar General every day. Look at your neighbor and say, who you really trust? And I'm through. Give me three more minutes. Give me three more minutes. The text teaches us it says that if you all remain in my word, if y'all do what God told us to do, He said, Listen, I need for y'all to understand you all are about to walk into a season of favor. I need, I need somebody that know they favored to just high five your neighbor and say, Baby, I know I'm favored. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Listen, and, and listen, look at them when you tell them that. You can tell folk that's only tolerating you and not celebrating you. Because when you tell somebody you know you favored, they say you so sure are. But when you tell somebody that's only tolerating you, they look at you with this side eye persona. I, I found out, Pastor McDowell, I found out, I found out something about God. God uses favor to bring things into full fruition. Favor is not that element of our walk with God because we got it all together. Favor is that necessary integer between us and God that God utilizes to keep us encouraged until we walk into our full promise. Favor is that hypoallergenic solution that God uses to irritate our haters. Because when you walk in favor, folk look at you and don't understand how you have what you have. How in the world did he get nine acres? How in the world did he get a brand new church? How in the world did he get those two houses? How in the world did he start off with humble beginnings? Well, the Bible says, despise not humble beginnings. Oh, look like God can trust him. The Bible said we have not because we're asked not. Oh, look like he's been asking. The Bible said eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Oh, look like somebody been seeing something. The matter of fact, he testified and said for the whole week of the revival he said this is our church this is our church this is our church this is our church put your hand on yourself and say I'm favored baby I'm favored I'm favored I'm favored I'm favored well, matter of fact take your hands off yourself and put your hands on your neighbor and say you favored 
Come on, tell them you favored. Matter of fact, tell them you favored. Tell them, yeah, your bills are paid. Tell them you favored. Tell them your life is abundantly blessed. Tell them you favored. Tell them life is about to get good in your life. Why? Because I'm faithful. He said, he said, he said, listen, he said, make sure that when y'all keep these words of promise, this favor is going to keep you while you're going through problems. I need somebody to understand favor is not because you're perfect. If favor meant because we were perfect, all of us need to just sit down. But it's because God find imperfect people, place a perfect favor over their life. Tell them to go do a perfect work and even in the process have some issues but we ain't got to worry about that because God done already fixed everything that's going to come up. Tell three people around you baby God done already fixed it. He done already fixed, he done already fixed it. Moses, I'm through after this. Moses talks to the people and he tells them listen because you all are willing to do what God said do. He said if we're going to stop all of this gang violence that's going down on our streets, all of this crime that's unfolding in our world, if we're going to stop all of the political injustice that's unfolding before our eyes, he said it's going to only happen after we put the word back in our houses. Verse number nine, it says, and thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. I just believe that the body of Christ is not going to be effective until our homes come under subjection of the word. The Bible says the charity starts at home. Man, God, I feel pretty good. And, and then the shed, and then it spreads abroad. So I just believe that there are a lot of people trying to come to church, Pastor McDowell, trying to fool you into thinking that they are God's greatest supporters, but they don't even pray at home. They don't even discipline their children at home. They'll pay their bills, but don't want to pay their tithes. They'll sit up and get mad about stuff like Eric Gardner. They'll get mad about Trayvon Martin. They'll get mad about all of the other killings, but won't get mad when somebody is starting mess in the church. I just believe that we're going to have to first get the house in order, and then we can bring the world under subjection of God's word. Because it said here in verse number 10, and it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he swore unto thy fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities which thou buildest not. Well, but verse number 11 says, and houses full of all good things which thou fieldest not. Touch your neighbor and say to neighbor, you ought to touch your pocket. Say neighbor, I don't know how you came in here, but say neighbor, I declare that by the word of God, your home has got to be blessed. Neighbor, I declare by the word of God that your purse is, any woman got a purse, I dare you to put your hand on your purse and say in the name of Jesus, no more lack, no more lack, no more lack, no more lack, no more lack. Now brethren, if you got wallets, you ought to grab your wallet and say, God, in the name of Jesus, I came in here broke, but in the name of Jesus, I'm no longer broke. In the name of Jesus, I'm blessed. My money is blessed. 
look at your neighbor and say neighbor now is your shout cue because God he's getting ready to fill you up yeah look at your neighbor and say neighbor you've been empty but get ready get ready say neighbor you've been dry but get ready get ready say neighbor you've been tired but get ready get ready cause joy is coming your way peace is coming your way grab your neighbor you ought to get in active with him grab your neighbor rock him and shake him shake him and rock him Rock them and shake them. Shake them and rock them. Say, neighbor, I declare that by the power of God, your life, yeah, your life is a blessed life. And say, neighbor, I want to ask you a question. Say, neighbor, if God then bless you, tell me why don't nobody else know about it tell your neighbor say neighbor you get ready to walk in overflow neighbor get ready to walk in overflow anybody ready for overflow if you're ready for overflow leave from where you seated and go find somebody and say neighbor i don't know where you come from i don't know what you've been going through but say neighbor i want to declare that goodness and mercy yeah is heading your way look at your neighbor and say neighbor be careful how you doubt me say neighbor be careful how you doubt me because God working in my favor and favor ain't fair favor ain't free but it's shown of words anybody know it works if you know it works say yeah yeah Pastor McDowell, God bless you. May the Lord God bless you real good. But before I leave, I just want to tell you a story. Pastor McDowell, I'm reminded of a little boy who always went to band practice. He never had a horn, but he always wanted to march. He never had a horn, but he always wanted to march. And every day, when he get out of school, he'll go to the band hall and he'll sit there and move his fingers. But when the band director will come in the band hall, the band director would ask him what he was doing. He said, I'm getting ready for my solo. Y'all don't want to hear me in here. Y'all know what happened every day for 60 days little johnny kept on going to the band hall he couldn't find a horn but you know what happened there came an old lady that heard about little johnny she brought little johnny a brand new horn she told little johnny if you can play this horn you can have this horn she asked her what songs you want to hear she said just play what you want to play y'all know what he played tears the old ship of zion y'all know what he played amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved your wretch just like me i once was lost but now i'm found i was blind but now i see y'all know what he played he said i'll play one more number he played the blood he played the blood he played the blood he played the blood she said what are the words there is a song i love to hear i love to sing his praise but you know what she said from every mountain to valley low it reaches look at your neighbor and say the blood still works and that's what i want to tell you when it get rough you ain't got a hole just keep on practicing the blood 
bless your legs. To bless your legs. To bless your legs. Yeah. Yeah. Ah! Anybody know God's all right? If you know God's all right, y'all do me one more favor. One grab somebody, put your arm around them and say, neighbor, I gotta let you know because the preacher said it. But say, neighbor, I want you to know he died. Yes, he died. Yeah, he died. He died. Yes, he died. He died. He died. He died. But early, early Sunday morning, he got up. Anybody know he got up? If you know he got up, say yes, 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 on working keep on dreaming and keep on working sooner or later later or sooner God he gonna bring it to pass anybody know he'll bring it to pass if you know he'll bring it to pass say yeah 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 doors of the church is open. You can come by letter, candidate for baptism, a Christian experience. This is a good day. Y'all switch right there. It's a good day. The doors of the church is open. There are some things. Doors of the church. I may not know. He's over. There are some places I. There's room. You don't have to be a member here. We'll just get you a member of all places. But I am sure of this one thing. My God is real. I can feel him in my soul. That's what. Yes, yes, God is real. God is real. He's real in my soul. There's still room. Yes, God is real. For he has washed and made me whole. Love for me is like pure gold. My God is real. Amen. Uh, there's plenty of room, but we see there is none. Amen. You've been viewing us via streaming. Thank God for you. The man of God has preached out of his soul. The man of God has preached like never before. I want you to go out and not just talk about the man, but talk about the man called Jesus. Yeah. Spread him that he's alive and he's away. Yeah. Go out and tell him that he's 
saving everybody that wants to be saved. This is the first part of our victory and dedication service. Come right back with us on the third Sunday. We're going to part two. Dr. Walter Newsom and the Mount Gilead Missionary Baptist Church will be with us. Until next time, remember John 8, 32, and you shall know the truth, and the truth that you know shall make you free. Until the next time, you be blessed. I'm Pastor Max. Yeah!